Good morning and a very warm welcome to Campus College. I am Rohan. And I am Gabrielle. And now to Louis, who has some very interesting news for us. In international news, autism is a condition where the victim has a hard time communicating or relating to others. Scientists now believe that grandparents can pass down the condition to their children. It's unclear, but there is a chance that grandparents can transmit the silent mutations. According to the National Autistic Society, more than one in every hundred people have autism in the UK, and this includes students here at Catmus College. The silent mutations, which are changes in the generic material, are likely to have no obvious impact on older fathers' own children, but they may have to build, have to build up through the sub subsequent generations or interact with other genes and environmental factors to decrease the chance of grandchildren developing the condition, researchers say. In national news, Chancellor George Osborne has got some new ideas for us this year. Luckily, this year will not, we will not be entering the triple diff recession, but it's not all the great. In, in, in a matter of months, we will incur, incur a 2% increase on to most products. On the bright side of things, the two pence increase on petrol duty being scrapped and also the 6p pence additional cost to a pint of beer is being scrapped. Ed Balls, the shadow chancellor, Chancellor had urged George Osborne to make a swift economic changes after the growth forecast of 2013 halved. The overall picture has more negative points than good. Points for families as there is more tax, less pensions and a slight inflation in goods are being brought forward. In local news, the, the Rutland Ospreys project has been one of the mo one of the best wildlife reintroductions of the la of the last two decades in it first started in 1996 and the first osprey nested successfully in 2001 rutland ospreys have really helped the population of british ospreys and one of the rutland's ospreys has bred into wales on monday the on Monday, the first of Rutland's ospreys has arrived 03 in the snow, snow and fog, taking shelter at the nest site, Rutland's most successful osprey so far for the last 18 years. He hatched in 1997 and returned. On Tuesday, Rutland's second and third ospreys both returned on a brighter day. 5R has been sighted regularly at Manton Bay, in breaking news, we have just heard that another osprey has just arrived at Rutland Water. Thanks, Lou, for that fascinating news. So now let's go over to the library, where an interesting conversation is taking place, strangely, about neighbours. Hello, we're here to talk about whether elderly people should live in a care home or with their families. I'm here to discuss this matter with my friend Adam. Many years ago, elderly friends or relatives lived with their families, but now life for most people is busier and elderly people now tend to live in care homes. An elderly woman who has been reported missing for seven years was found dead in her own home. There are many rumours that she either had a heart attack or a nasty fall. Unable to move, she may have starved to death. After being alone in the house for years, she was finally discovered discovered by the police, who only found her because of the excessive amount of vermin around her house. When they entered there, there was a rotting smell and a decayed body. The house was swarming with rodents and covered in mess and animal droppings. What is difficult to understand is why she was reported missing, but not looked for. Why did nobody think for look for her in her own home? Surely the council would have gone round for the bills especially if her telly was left on. We questioned 20 people in our form and only five said they visited their neighbours weekly. Would you know if your neighbour was sick? 
Most young people over 13 have Facebook and Twitter, but is that a good thing? The amount of friends that people have on Facebook makes it a wonder that if they really know them outside of the internet. Many people find out more information via social networks like Facebook and Twitter instead of person to person. Of course, here at Campus, we use Makewaves, a safe and sociable network. Finally, are you close to your friends on Facebook than your real friends and relatives? Tell us on Makewaves. Back to the studio. So, Rohan, you have been researching the news about the Olympic legacy. Can you tell us about it? Sure, I can. The Olympics were a huge part of 2012, but has it had any effect on us, the younger generation? I got the chance to interview a variety of people with a, an array of different views. Did you participate in the London 2012 Olympics? I did, and it was an absolutely amazing experience. Uh, really, really, uh, a really experience that I'll never forget. And what do you think of the Paralympic legacy? The Paralympics in London were amazing. I think it's something unlike it and how people really got into it and watching it. So hopefully it will go on and, and help you know, future sports for the Paral Paralympians. And, so it's very exciting. How do you think this has been a result of the Olympic legacy? Um, yeah, there was a report saying that there's been no more take, I think, in disabled sport um, since the Paralympics. I think it's changed people's perception on uh, the disability sport, um, but it hasn't really fed through yet. Um, there's still a lot of the clubs, the local clubs, are not really ready for people coming in like that, that maybe not have the, the toilets, the facilities, the equipment required to um, disabled people within sport. Thank you for that short but amazing explanation about the Olympics legacy which really was a huge part of 2012. And now we should move to Simon who is going to talk about the technology and games just like Minecraft and how it can be make learning interesting and in our curriculum. Minecraft is a game that has taken the world by storm where almost anything is possible. Players build to survive, innovate or impress in survival or creative game modes. Since its original alpha release in May 2009, the PC version alone has sold 8 million copies, with others available for the Xbox 360 console and iOS devices. It's been monumentally popular among young people, myself included, but one thing others seem to forget is that these games have educational benefits. For example, I've built a new studio, as you can see here. The landscape features generated in a Minecraft world could represent real land features in geography, too. Another example is that students could create scenes and then describe them in a subject such as English or act something out. I've made a Red Riding Hood scene to demonstrate. We all describe things differently. We've got different ways of interpreting things. The possibilities are endless. And Minecraft's just the start. A number of other games could be used to create, teach and inspire. But can games be trusted to become one of teaching's greatest assets? Thank you, Simon. So now let's talk about Richard III. It may seem like a long time ago, but last summer his bones were found in Leicester under a car park. Last week, Harry, one of our reporters, spoke to Richard Van Allen from the King Richard III Society regarding the huge commotion about finding the, the finding of the bones. Richard told us that finding the remains had focused the world's attention on Richard III as he was the last English king to be killed in battle. The society hopes that Richard's character will now be reassessed. Yes, the information from Richard Van Allen was truly amazing. But now let's go to Richard Buckley, who is the lead archaeologist who dug up the car park. Do you think history of King Richard should be rewritten? Well, that's another good question, because it's whether archaeology can actually answer those questions. Archaeology can tell us about the last moments of Richard's life and how he died, and how his body was treated subsequently. But what it can't tell us is anything about his personality. It can tell us, I suppose, uh, the fact that we now know he did have this spinal disorder, and it can tell us that he had quite a strong character and that he overcame that and still managed to fight in battle and become king. But it can't tell us whether he was evil or not. And I, I still sit on the fence. I think um, Richard is probably no different from any other medieval kings. He would do any, anything necessary to consolidate his position as the king of England. That was great. So now let's talk about Matthew Morris. He was the one who actually found the bones in the first trench. So now let's go over to Toby, who is currently speaking to him. How did you feel when you first found the leg bone? Um, but finding the leg bone wasn't that much of a surprise because we were looking for a church, so we knew we were going to find lots of skeletons. Um, 
the time when one leg bone wasn't particularly surprising. It, was, it wasn't until we actually started exploring the whole skeleton that that was when it got really exciting. What was your most surprising bit about the skeleton? Um, I think it was the curve spine. Um, it's always been thought that Richard Stokes' hunchback was a, a made up story. And so to actually find a skeleton that appeared to be of a man who'd been killed in battle, who had a hunchback as well. That was really surprising. Well, that we weren't expecting at all. How could you tell it was Richard the Richard Third from DNA? Yeah. Um. Okay, okay. Um, so we've been doing research on Richard's family, and we've tracked a, a very distant relative of Richard the Third, who is um, a 17th great nephew of one of Richard the Third's sisters. And we've compared his DNA with the skeleton's DNA, and they're the same. So we can say that these are the skeleton and this relative are related. And therefore, with all the other evidence as well, we can say that this is Richard III. Has this been one of your best excavations yet? Uh, yes, it's certainly been the most exciting. <laughs> we also met Brian Mullen, who did a workshop with us about how to make Shakespeare fun. We asked about Shakespeare's work on Richard III and why it is important 500 years later. Well, I think the way, the words that he used and the characters that he created are really universal. Um, so that even though he's writing about, you know, kings and queens who existed in medieval times, like Richard III and others, we can connect those to political leaders or um, people that we know today, and the issues are still very, very relevant. And, um, I I don't enjoy Shakespeare, so how can you make it relevant to me? Did you not enjoy doing our workshop today? It was okay, but okay. yeah. Well, my, my advice for people who think they don't enjoy Shakespeare, usually, if you've just read it in your English class, it can be quite boring. But if you start to pick the, the words up and, and act them out, and take on the character and act like Richard III or act like Macbeth, and not worry so much about understanding everything, but really using the words actively, I think you'll start to enjoy it more. That would be my advice. Why do you think children need to um, be learning about Shakespeare now? For many, many reasons. Um, one of which is just the incredible use of language and inventiveness, which I think inspires a lot of people. But also, especially the history plays, it's the history of your country, and it's, I mean, it's not even my country, and I, I love learning about it. Um, it's very rich. He made some amazing characters that have lessons for all of us, I think, even still today. And now let's go to Luke, who has the latest weather for us. Hello. The weather forecast in Oakham today is for a nice, clear day with a chance of sunny spells. The highest temperature will be reaching no higher than 4 degrees. Early Friday morning there will be snow and mainly be cold. Finally, the outlook for the weekend. Saturday we will be cold and we will have snowy spells and low temperatures of one degree. So please wrap up warm if you have a football or rugby game. On Sunday it will be dry but cold with temperatures reaching no more than one degree. Thank you and back to the studio. Thanks Luke and a big thank you to you for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye.